we know that with climate change, things are going to get warmer and moisture events are going to be more, more dramatic. So environments and soils uh, will tend to get either drier or wetter depending on their location on Earth. These moisture uh, changes are going to be, become more extreme, so they're very dry or very wet. And while we know some things about how temperature might affect uh, soil organic carbon, we don't really know what moisture will do. Well, soil organic carbon is sort of this uh, fundamental property of the soil that affects basically any any soil function. Or when you have more carbon, soils can uh, store more water store more nutrients, um, they're less affected by erosion, lower tendency to to puddle water. And what we found was that in consistently higher moisture, uh, not waterlogged, just slightly wetter, uh, microbes uh, process the organic inputs better, more efficiently and lost less CO2. And that resulted to basically more soil organic carbon storage in the soils. By you know, sequestering more uh, CO2 into soil organic carbon, or at least not losing additional carbon, we can help, you know, curb off a bit of uh, what's happening uh, in terms of, you know, greenhouse gas emissions and accumulation in the atmosphere. So we want to know how to, to be able to manage that. And in soils that we can't really manage, we can maybe better predict what's going to happen to that, to that carbon when, you know, moisture events, extreme moisture events, or trends in in soil moisture uh, will take place in the future. We were able to uh, understand how uh, the composition changed with microbial processing of the soils. We were able to understand that there is more carbon that looks more like microbes in the more moist soils and more carbon that looked more like plant carbon in the drier soils. So that's something that would have been uh, nearly impossible to do without synchrotron technology. I've been working on the SGM beamline, uh, mainly uh, using their mail-in service which has been great. Uh, I've worked remotely on the uh, mid-IR uh, beamline, and in a month or so, I plan to visit uh, the synchrotron again and work in person on the, on the SM beamline. So it's been a great experience.